Northern Valley boys are going to come off their first loss of the season as they fell to the Alma Cardinals on Tuesday. Tonight they'll face off against the Titans on senior night from Winona Tri-Plains and Brewster, the combination co-op schools here on sports. That all begins in just under seven minutes of play, so let's kick it to the sponsors, and we'll be back with your starters in a matter of moments. Thanks for joining us here at Open Spaces Sports. Welcome back to Open Spaces Sports. Clint Cox and Dean Lewis has made his way up here, but he's finishing his cheeseburger, so I'll let him do that while I finish the, the uh, pregame and get your starters out to you here tonight as Northern Valley is going to go against Tri-Plains Brewster on senior night. Here in the boys' side of things, Northern Valley falling their last time out with their first loss on the season. We'll see how they bounce back. Northern Valley will go this way. A six-foot sophomore, number five, Gavin Tallheim. Carson Schmidt is a six-foot senior, wears number 11 for the Titans. Kenton Tolheim, a 6'1 senior, wears number 11 for the Huskies. Number 15, Nicholas Zarr is a 6'1 senior. A six-foot senior for Northern Valley, number 22, Jason Cox. A 5'7 senior for the Titans, number 24, Court Collins. Northern Valley will go with a six-foot senior, number 24, Jeremiah Hansen. The Titans will roll with a six-foot senior, number 25, Cody Kazveska. And a six-foot-two senior in the middle for Northern Valley, number 33, Drew Stemper. And a six-foot senior for the Titans, number 34, Ben Peterson. That's how the starters go down. Head coach Douglas Fisher for the Titans, assisted by Michael Pettibone. And Northern Valley longtime head coach Kevin Sides. At his side is Ross Cole, which finished up our last game. We're on a celebrity tour here, Dean Lewis. <laughs> Welcome to the broadcast of Open Spaces Sports, my friend. What an honor it is to be with you guys tonight. Well, I tell you what, uh, I asked Ross the first question. Have you ever done this before? I actually have. Several years ago, one of the local radio stations, uh, when we were doing our tournaments, you get to that 9 o'clock game, and they just were looking for something fun to do. And I actually got to do it that night a couple of times during that tournament. So it's, it's fun. Well, I love it. And the people love getting to know you at home. Some of them might not know you t so well. Maybe they'll get a little more in detail of uh, head coach Dean Lewis throughout this game. The Titans yeah. will start in a zone defense, and the three-pointer by Hanson is no good, but an offensive board by Skimper. Beautiful bounce pass across the baseline, put up and in by Jeremiah. Yep, the boys got a chance to uh, to respond from a, a, a rough game Tuesday night, and it's going to be fun to see how they respond to that. That is always the key. You know, an undefeated team up until Tuesday night went down versus a team from Alma. Got them. How they start back into this one is key, but these boys always love to play so fast. I don't think it really matters too much to them. They've already forgot about it. Yeah, and, and you can tell just watching the practices this week. There's just there's a great energy when they're in that gym anyway, and you just sometimes you just don't have it for the whole game. So Peterson up off the glass, no good. Tracked down on the rebound by Coda, and he will take it off glass and in. All knotted at two. We're no stranger to this gymnasium, and on senior night, it feels like Northern Valley's always here, <laughs> and they bring their game. We've played some really squeakers in here when it hasn't been that way for records-wise. First foul against the Titans will go against Peterson underneath, trying to defend Skimper. So it'll be interesting how this first quarter goes, whether they can kind of keep pace with Northern Valley here, because coming into it, if you just look at the, the tail of the tape, one would say Northern Valley's got a pretty good chance of just putting the gas pedal down and going through them. But senior night, anything can happen. Yeah, and when you're, you know, you're ranked as high as our guys are, they're going to get their best. They're going to get their best effort. So 
you just got to be ready for that every night when you're when you're the hunted, not the hunter. Good board by Peterson will clear it for his team, and they'll reset against the Northern Valley man-to-man. -man. Up high with it is Schmidt. Couple years starter here for the Titans. Into the corner, Peterson has to throw it over his head. Now to Hanson. Quickly hits it to the rim. Reverse style puts it in. Jeremiah leads everybody with four. They're so good in the open court. He's, he's not just a track star. You get some of those guys that are just fast. Jeremiah is fast and calm as yeah. well. With good skills. It's a rare combination of that much speed. And we call him kind of the insurance policy. Nice. You, you always pay into Jeremiah. You never know when he's going to cash out. But he will cash out when needed. Yeah, yeah. That's the beauty of a senior that's been through it a lot. And we talk about scoring a lot with the all-time records. Here, Ross Cole gave me an update as Tolheim's three is no good. Jason Cox fighting for a rebound, but it'll go off of him and over to the Titans. No, they're going to give it to Northern Valley. My, my pardon my. My thought process there, Jeremiah Hansen with 629 points coming into this one. Cracks the top 20, maybe 25 all-time scoring at Northern Valley. Heck of an effort here. And for that matter, Drew Skimper on that list at 682. Three, three team members here all on that top all-time scoring. Just means they put up a lot of points. And that is the sixth po or point already for Jeremiah we thought he might pick up the scoring with Kenner Connect out with that injury. He's resting it. It's definitely capable. Yep, all these guys, they're all capable of having big games. That's what makes them so dangerous. You don't have to rely on just one or two people. You sound like one of the league coaches that I've talked to that has to coach against them all the time. You just don't know which one's going to go off on which night. Yep. Skimper got whistled for that one, and now a travel on... Is that Bryce? Yep, Bryce Ruliter, who's checked into the game, a 5'6 freshman. Tough spot to be a 5'6 freshman guard uh -huh. against these Northern Valley seniors. Yeah. Inside, they'll find Drew Skemper way deep with the touch, and with the left hand, he is so smooth. If you give him that position that deep, you're not stopping him. You're going to have to be a much bigger player. He's excellently skilled with both the right hand and the left hand in, in, on the interior like that. And very few players really have scored as many points with the offhand that I can think of in Northern Valley history. Hanson went for kind of a heat check and put it off the side of the rim. Back into Skimper, inside out. Action, Tallheim three on the way, just long. One that comes to mind is an old time name. Clint Lowry used to love the left hand around the gymnasium, and he, he was on that starting five that won the 1990 state championship for Northern Valley. And his son, if you haven't caught it, Brady, that was in this class in grade school, just signed to play linebacker at University of Kearney. Wow. So yet another athlete that would have been in this senior class played at, Man <laughs> played at Manhattan High. Won a state championship there on the football side. Wouldn't be surprised if he's tuned in a time or two to watch his old running mates play some basketball here at Open Spaces. That's very cool. That means you're getting something done in elementary PE classes too. They're just those kids just don't become players. You know, now that doesn't mean they're not out on the on the pavements and playing, but man, that's really impressive. Located in Almina, Kansas, and they serve the fine folks of Phillips County and Norton County and in and around the Almina and Northern Valley area and, of course, Long Island as well and even into southern Nebraska. All Creatures Vet Clinic is open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. And you can reach them by calling 785-669-2227. Small animal care, large animal care, it's all available at All Creatures Vet Clinic, supporting the Northern Valley Huskies athletically and academically. Before we could even get back from break, Tallheim drains the net on a three-pointer of his own. Kenton, been on a little bit of a hot streak, hovering around that 17 points per night game this season. Follow a jumper. They're doing a great job of using the glass. This one goes down for Coda again. Lob inside, oh. Jeremiah, reverse style. Such unselfish play. I love that about the boys and our girls right now. Well, that is 
been one of the things that head coach Kevin Sides, assistant coach Ross Cole, has tried to imprint on these boys. Just get a good shot. It yeah. doesn't have to come from you or who. Just make sure it's a good one. Yeah. And none easier than that one for Kenton, but it goes just off the rim. Northern Valley somehow gets that ball back. Three-pointer in the corner by Kenton is no good. And quickly out ahead of everybody is Schmidt. Uh oh. Found a little bit of uh -oh. intent. Uh oh. <laughs> That's just overthinking it a little bit, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Here, you take it. I don't want it. Well, Carson got to go up with that basketball. He kind of got off off rhythm there. Lost a dribble a little bit, and then tried to find Peterson, but Peterson was trying to move into position to rebound. Peterson will sit. Now they're going to run with two freshman guards out high. Excuse me, Jet Kazmiska, number 20 into the game as a sophomore, but undersized in this 2-3 zone. Northern Valley's going to be able to get off any three they want. It's just which one they want. Now a lob for Tallheim lays it in. We could have had a rim rocker there. He's getting close to finishing that up above the rim. Jet will fire a three off the back iron, no good. I asked Coach Sides what were the odds we might see some high elevation and some thunder dunking tonight. He was awfully low. <laughs> He, he was, gave it like 12% chance, but he did name the player Jeremiah as the most likely to get one. I think that's probably because of his prowess of being able to steal that basketball. And here he is out in the break, lays it up with the left hand again. Did he have the previous bucket too? Um, I don't remember. I think so. They happen so fast, it's hard to keep up. Kazmiska tries to squeeze a bounce pass in, and Gavin ripped it. Drops it forward for Jeremiah. Round his back to Kent, and it goes to the rim. Lays it up. He's hammered across the face. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Yeah, that whole dunking process, I was actually the first one to dunk it in my high school. And there's, there's a level of nerve that you have to take just being willing to miss it because you're going to miss some. And then you got to take all the ribbon from your buddies. <laughs> So were you 6'9 in high school as well, or did you grow after high school? I grew two inches every year of high school. So I was 6'2", then 6'4", then 6'8", 6'6", <laughs> and 6'8". <laughs> so is that what you are, 6'8"? 6'8", yeah. 6'8"? Yeah. Well, I used to be. I don't know if I am anymore. Well, you can still count it. Yeah. It's just easier saying 6'8", than 6'7". Well, your buddies surely gave you a lot of trouble if you couldn't get one down or multiple down at 6'8". Let's put it that way, right? Oh, it's, it's still hard. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of bodies underneath of you, right? Yep. They make it look easy yeah. in college and in pro sports. Now a turnover as Zara was trying to reverse the ball and his teammate wasn't quite ready. We'll call a timeout here, and we'll be back in 60 seconds with more at Open Spaces Sports. At Equity Bank, they mean more. More solutions for your finances and more bankers standing by, whether that's in our lobbies or in the drive throughs They're at the Equity Bank. They're proud members of the community, big supporters of high school athletics. They shoot straight, and you score when it comes to no ATM fees nationwide. And don't forget to ask about Equity Bank Insurance, which offers an array of insurance products from home, auto, farm, business, and crop insurance. Why not stop by at Almena or Norton's locations and visit them online at equitybank.com to let them show you why equity means more. You appreciate it when people listen to you. You like it when they understand. We understand, and we think we have something you're going to like. My name is Brandi Archer. I'm part of the First National Bank and Trust family in Phillipsburg, Logan, Long Island, Smith County Bank and Smith Center, and Solomon Valley Bank in Beloit, member FDIC. You work hard around home, around your family, at your job and you deserve some perks. Benefits like shopping and travel discounts, protection on your cell phone, roadside assistance. Perks. Today go to agbank.bank, take a look at the brand new perk checking account and all the special benefits perfect for someone like you. Reduce risk, save money, get your own perk checking account. 
Know that today and every day, First National Bank and Trust is here for you. Back into action, lob pass for Jeremiah this time. Is a little long, he couldn't control it. Jeremiah's had an exceptional hot first quarter, as well as his Husky teammates as they put up 23, now with just 25 ticks remaining here in this first quarter. Well, Dean, where did you go to high school at? I went to high school in, in Illinois. It's called Geneseo, Illinois. And it's, I don't, if you know where the Quad Cities are, we're, we're a, kind of a, a bedroom community for John Deere right outside the Quad Cities. With five seconds to go, they're going to push and see if they can get another one off. you got to find Jeremiah, man. Nobody's going to get it off. They do get it over to Jeremiah, but it's a little too late. 23-4 at the end of one. We'll be back with your second quarter action and more from head coach Dean Lewis in 60 seconds. Swing it over, Schmidt looking at it. And now he'll go back and reset this with Czar. You'd like to see a little bit of offensive cohesiveness from the Titans. They've just been struggling with Northern Valley's pressure defense. Yeah, I'm always impressed when you guys call these games, how you know our kids and their kids' names just right off the top of your head. I, I always, by the time I'm done with a scouting report, it's number five and number 12. and. I never know. I never know any of their names. Coda battling here on senior night. He's got the only four points for the Titans, and he'll go to the line to shoot two here. As I have a little bit of advantage, like Coda here on senior night. I've been calling him for four years. Ah, oh, nice. So the kids within the league that I get to do the league tournament. Yeah. And then maybe a couple throughout the round robin, maybe pick up a football game and the ladies on the volleyball side. Yeah. You kind of get to know them. That's true. And, and you kind of feel like it's a lot easier to call a game today than it was four years ago. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Drew Skimper just puts that basketball in with sheer will on that one. You have to really have a game plan to stop him. If you're just going to play behind him, he's going to score every time. What does scare me, moving into the playoffs, and you've been there, done that as a long-term coach, beautiful screen there by Peterson, freed up the shot, but Schmidt missed it. We haven't had, went against a real true big, though, yet. I've the, had that same thought, and I'm curious to see how Drew does with that because it makes a big difference. There's a couple big boys over there in Dighton that has got a great team this year. And then always the defense from a team like St. John's Beloit, who took us out last year, can be a factor. Drew's yeah. working in here, and it'd be interesting, but he's got such soft touch, and he catches so well. Yep, shout out to one of my former teammates from Garden City. He's got some sons in Dighton right now, and they're having Which a Which one is that? Season. Is that Kramer? Kramer, yeah. Really? Yeah, this, his, their dad, oh, buddy, was he a player. Just He wasn't a big guy. Man, he was explosive off the floor. Played his butt off all the time. He's a good buddy of mine. So out of nowhere, Dean Lewis out with a scouting report, maybe for state tournament time. We are in opposite sub-states. Yeah, that's, that's he, great. He's, Dad's going to ask, and you're going to say, you're going to have to front him. Well, what do you mean? Kramer's like 6'4", 6'5". <laughs> you might still want to front him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and if they're 6'4", it's not because Dad was 6'4". Dad was a 5'10 <laughs> guy. Really? <laughs> yeah. They're yeah. big. Yeah. Checking back in the senior guards here for Northern Valley, Jeremiah Hansen and the sophomore Gavin Tallheim to sit Jason and Brody. So you went to high school in Geneseo. Yeah. And then made your way to Garden City Community College, huh? Yep, yep. It was, uh, it was, to me, it was the heyday of, of junior college basketball. You know, those middle 80s to kind of middle 90s when 
you had the Prop 48 that took those guys that struggled in the classroom and they all went to junior college. We had five guys on my team in Garden City my sophomore year that went all D1. You know, every wow. night, every night we were playing. I played against 13 guys that ended up in the NBA. Really? Oh, yeah. It was unbelievable. J.R. Ryder played at uh, Allen County. That, was, that may be my claim to fame. I held him to 27 one night with a whole lot of help. <laughs> J.R. Ryder, wasn't his nickname Baby Jordan? Yes, and he was so strong. Oh, you held him to 27. Held him to 27. Good job, Dean. Yep. Good job. Well, the night before, Hutch held him to 52. <laughs> and the night after that, Barton County held him to 42. So I held him to 27. Maybe he was tired from the other teams. I, I own his basketball card because I was that age when he was yeah. in the NBA. So That's awesome. Held basketball underneath. Czar did a good job of tying Skimper up there. And the Titans own the possession arrow. Checking back in is Jet, and out is Bryce. Yeah, and me taking any credit for only having him score 27 is is me being a storyteller. Well, that's all right. <laughs> you got to have a claim to fame yep, somewhere. Yeah. That's a big fish story there. But it's a big, big it fish. It was a big fish. <laughs> it was. He was top six draft picks in the NBA his yeah, class. I'm pretty yeah. sure by the Heat. Yeah. Inside to Skimper, double teamed. Oh. It doesn't matter. He just missed a bucket, but somehow he gets an offensive rebound. Left-handed oh. flip, and finally he gets a whistle. He'll go to the line to shoot two. I am such a fan of big guys that just battle like that. That's how I got started, and I eventually developed some skills afterwards. And you play that hard all the time. I'll tip my hat to you all day long. Well, we used to call something. You weren't even here. We used to call it the Drew Zone. <laughs> For two years, Drew couldn't get on the varsity um, rotation because we had other experienced players ahead of him, and he hadn't quite developed into his body. He lived at the free throw line. Mm -hmm. He would shoot a very high percentage at the high post, and he'd catch in what we called the Drew zone and just constantly put it in from there. Now he's abandoned that zone and just gone right to the block saying, nobody can stop me from this close. Why do I need to shoot any further away? Well, and there's something special to be said for that guy that will just pay his dues, wait his turn, be part of great teams, have a great attitude, and now that it's my turn, I'm ready to play. Gavin Tallheim open for three, makes every one of them count his first of the night. And Gavin, a prolific scorer himself, but it plays that defensive dog for this Northern Valley team. Scoop up and score for Kenton. Yep, and that's knowing you're a sophomore. You'll get your chance to do all that fun. Well, Big Brother ain't going to pass you the ball, no, right? No, heck no. There's a lot of seniors out there, buddy. Earn your, earn your way. Schmidt along the baseline is going to be short. Jason out front. Get this on camera, girl. He'll try. Holy cow. He came up two feet short. <laughs> I thought he might try and rim rock one. He's a long ways off, Dean. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. I missed my fair share of dunks. I know that. I actually bet some of my uncles that Jason might be the first Cox to dunk in a basketball game. And he has come a long ways. Transition two more for, for Drew. Yeah, that's so fun. And I watch these guys in practice, and they're just trying to tear that rim off the, off the goal there. And that's that's how you become a dunker. Unfortunately, it means you're not shooting as many three-point shots as you probably should. <laughs> so that could have been a big part of why I developed so slowly. I think I wanted to be a dunker. Man, I had to lower the rim down when I was that age. I said, Dad, I need for Christmas one of those that, wow, um, turn over on a travel out high. We'll bring in a whole pile of subs. I need one of those crankable rims so I can, when I'm 6'4", Dad, I want to know where to shoot the basketball. So bring it down. Yeah. Yeah, we had, we went through three goals on my garage because I was trying to be a dunker. And I just tore two of them right all the way off the, off the, off the garage. <laughs> Brody Preston, another one of those seniors that are capable of filling up a stat sheet. Just missed on that one. Schmidt tracks it down. Going to attack three Huskies. Jason comes away with the basketball. Quickly up forward to Owen. 
He'll try and touch pass to Gavin. It'll go off of 25 as Coda and stay with Northern Valley. Yeah, in my coaching brain, I always try to figure out, okay, what would I do against these guys? And I think I have a game plan I'm not going to share with anybody, and I think I could maybe slow them down to 60 or 65. But other than that, I don't. You know, I'd love to talk to you off air. I'm sure there's a lot of coaches that like you to just go ahead and spill the beans right now. But <laughs> And a timeout by Coach uh, Douglas Fisher will lead us to a break. 39-7 Northern Valley with one minute and five seconds to go in the second quarter. Stephen Cox and Associates of Long Island, Kansas wish the Northern Valley Huskies good luck this year. Stephen Cox Association and its employees value good sportsmanship and are committed to the athletic and academic success of the students of Northern Valley. Go Huskies from Stephen Cox and Associates. Schmidt out high with 60 seconds to go here before the half is up. Now he'll get it back to Coda. Coda, a very strong individual. Talked to Ross Cole. He went to a powerlifting deal where Coda dominated for a while in that powerlifting, Ross says. It looks like it. That kid's put together. Back to Schmidt it goes with 40 ticks now left before half. Northern Valley running with Owen Hammond, Jason Cox, Jeremiah Hansen, Gabe Rudd, and Brody Preston. Pump fake. Can't get away, and now a steal by Owen with numbers. He'll go to the rim, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. I love the aggressiveness from Owen. He has one speed, and it's full speed all the time. If he can just learn to control himself a little bit, he's going to be a fine player. And from what I hear, your boys are track stars. <laughs> you need to teach him. He's a heck of a 300 hurdler. I as believe a, it. As a freshman, he put in some very good times, and those are only going to get better. There's a lot of dudes on this team I'd love to spend a spring with and, and do some track with. Well, you might have the opportunity if you don't want to play golf. Are you a golfer? Well, I am a golfer. Well, then forget about that. <laughs> You can go play golf. After this yeah. season, you're going to earn it. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's awful good coaches already, so they don't need my help. Gabe knocks it out. It'll stay here on this end. 5.8 to go. Need to come somebody off a double screen here to get an open shot. Make it one more pass right there. Make the screen and go. It's all about the pass, not about trying to create your own shot in those opportunities. And that shot by Court Collins was just to the side and we're at halftime. As the locals performed the biggest cake raffle I have ever seen in my entire life. Hayden, will you turn the broadcast picture to that amount of cakes over there? That is ridiculous. It's like everybody gets a cake. If I'd have known that, I'd have put in my own $5 bill to bring home some because there's really not anywhere to stop unless you want to go through Colby there, head coach. All right, let's go through the scoring. Gavin Tallheim with three. Kenton Tallheim ends the half with nine. Owen Hammond with two. Jeremiah Hansen scores 12 points in that first quarter, none in the second. Brody Preston with two. Drew Skimper with 11 in the half. Northern Valley scored 23 in the first quarter, 18 in the second. For Tri Plains Brewster, scoring went like this Nicholas Zarr with two, and Caden Kazviska with five. They scored four and three in the first and second quarter, respectively. There we go. Avery Tallheim, finally a winner there. I know, Avery, you're probably listening. You're probably in the calving barn right now. Jesse's bringing home goodies. 
She says she only wins when she puts your name in the cake raffle, so she put your name in. <laughs> and now she's going to go fetching for food. That's just good strategy, really. You know, you take the winners to the winners. Jesse, picking them up and putting them down over there. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of touching on the different packages. That's not okay. Well, uh, she knows what Avery likes. Maybe, yeah. maybe it's going to go down for Valentine's Day, a second gift for him. That's true. Whatever that is, it looks awful good. I don't know if she rode with Kent and Belinda. She'll have to keep Kent's hands off of it. I was say, that may not home. make it home. That is one of the really great things about being out here, you know, because the last few years we spent in, in North Kansas City, and, you know, the, the cake raffles and all that kind of stuff just – that doesn't happen, you know, and, and it's rare that there's, you know, school bands and and just the whole com the sense of community and, and the pride that all these folks have in all these rural places. It's so nice. So what high school were you at last there? I was in Lathrop, Missouri. Okay. The Mules. And we had, we had a run of kids. That just doesn't happen in a school that size. It's a, it was probably 275, 300 kids in the school. And my youngest son's senior class had 95 kids in the class. And we had, we had 17 dudes that were all state athletes. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. It was unreal. Unreal. We, that was some fun time. Yeah. We were, you know, they were 27 and 2 in football. Um, you know, during those two years, we went nine straight seasons bringing home a state trophy in one sport or another. <laughs> it was, it's, it's unreal. That's called a dynasty. It is absolutely a dynasty, and you'll never see that many, that many, just and good kids and good athletes, and it, it, you know, you didn't even have to be very smart to have really good success. And, and you decided to hang it up there. And, and head out west, not even sure why you really landed in Almina. <laughs> yeah. But we'd love to hear the story. Well, I tell you, you know, my last year in Missouri was COVID year. And I had no idea exactly how burned out I was until I was trying to put some lessons together via Zooms and all this <laughs> other stuff. And I thought, I'm done. I am so done with all this stuff. And it took me the good, better part of two years to just kind of get myself right again, um, you know, and you just you just don't know. I you know, I raised five sons, and I was so busy so many years that you know I just I needed a break. So I, I got out one year and I just officiated, and I had just a great time with that. Um, and you know, once you get the itch, it's hard to get rid of it. Um, so. Um, you know, the opportunity, because I was, I don't, you know, I really didn't want to teach in the, in the classroom anymore either. So I was looking for something that had, you know, college level stuff and um, just something different, you know. And I, I, I saw this ad from, from Colby College there, community college there, and it said something about adult education and it said something about being in the prison. I thought, that sounds cool. So I, I, I threw in my name, and, and I, I talked to some really nice people at the interview, and, and next thing I know, I'm figuring out how to move out to, to western Kansas. And then you figure out there's nowhere to live, and it's like, oh, man, this is tough. Um, and I got into the prison, and I've so enjoyed that. You know, those, those guys in there are so appreciative of just a good, honest, genuine effort to help them. So, you know, they're – you can, you can think whatever you want about those guys in prison, but I'm telling you right now, the ones that are serious about their education, they don't do anything else. So their knowledge of solar or their knowledge of telecommunications is off the charts because they really want it and they want to change their life. Is that what you're teaching them right now? Yep, that's what I'm doing. And I didn't know a darn thing about any of that stuff. But, all right, so this is what we're doing. So I'll, I'm just going to go ahead and start learning this stuff. <laughs> um, that's an awesome, awesome opportunity. And then now you find yourself, you do find a, a, a place to live in Almina, and then your wife, somebody probably tells her, hey, you want to teach English? 
Is that yeah. how that went? It was one of those things where I was pretty – I was living in Norton come last February. Okay. So we kind of we – were, we were apart for a few months, which I'm not a big fan of that at all. No. But it, the opportunity wasn't going to wait for me to, to, you know, have that happen otherwise. So and, – and just so happened, Almina had been looking for an English teacher for a little while now. And, you know, she, I, I, just to brag on her a little bit, she is a tremendous person and a tremendous teacher and, you know – and you get to come to a place like this where you got great kids to work with, you can't get better than that. Well, you just ask any of the kids. They do love the Mrs. Lewis on that English side. So she found herself in the school system. First time I met you, I met you at church and said, hi, my name's Clint Cox. Would you like to coach girls' varsity basketball? <laughs> yeah. And you looked at me like, you got to be kidding me. Well, it, it I hadn't even had that thought yet. You know, I was still at a point where I was just, I was done with all that, and I was okay with being done with that. And then I got to meeting some of the kids because I got to do volleyball games. I like to officiate volleyball. So the first couple games I got to do uh, Northern Valley girls. So it was like, wow, what a great group of kids. It's no wonder my wife just raves about them when she comes home. And, you know, the opportunity showed itself, and I said, well, heck, yeah, I'll do that. And all up, thumbs up from there. You're in your first season, closing down. We've got three more games here before playoffs. You got another matchup against Golden Plains. It will be a, a tough one. But of course, one of the biggest hurdles you got to get over is that mental hurdle of no more Mary Barrett. And that's that's the challenge. That right now, that's the challenge because. You know, you talk about a kid that's just heart and soul, just left it all on the floor every time she played. You find me a better example than she is. She did a great job. Four-year starter for Northern Valley. If you were away, she busted up her knee really good. Got it good. She did it all. So she is done for her career at Northern Valley, and she loves track. She would have gone yeah. out for track and field, and she's a high jumper. Yeah. But that that is probably now completely off the table as well. Yeah, there's there's no really no chance she'll be able to get back with with the nature of her injury. Foul on court up high. We'll go back to Northern Valley, who's hobbling around on his knee that looks like it's giving him problems as well. But. Well, it's been good getting to know you here, and I'm glad you enjoyed the ladies. It's just kind of what they needed. Tolheim will line up a three and drain another one. Kenton well, continuing to score at a rapid pace. Yeah, and these kids right now, I, you know, I have enjoyed every single practice. I've, I've, I've put things on them that probably put them a little out of their comfort zone. And if they aren't very good at it, we just have a let's get better every day of attitude about it. And they have so taken to that, you know, and we, we, don't, we don't place blame. We've had so many close games, and the very next day we're just back in the gym getting better again. So, you know, when you've got it like that, um, you know, you know it spe helps. speaking of Mary, you know, I challenged her, go out and guard one of the guards. I never guarded a guard. <laughs> you know? Just give it a go. See what happens. And, you know, man. That's what she'd been doing the last couple of assignments. Yeah. Her assignment was the guard. Yep. And, and it took her – she was not ready for that in the beginning. She, it just looked like she was out of place. But she got the hang of it. Yes, she did. You know, and, and, and your daughter, Jordan, right now, because Mary went down, I'm going to ask her to play in the post. Well, I don't know how to play in the post, Coach. I know. Just keep listening to me. We'll, <laughs> we'll get you through it. You know, okay. And, you know, when, when, that's, when that's the attitude, how can you go wrong? Peterson picks up his fourth here early in the third quarter. Ben Peterson on senior night. Not how this is how he wanted to end his last game on his home court. He's going to get one more rest in before he'll probably get back in here late in this third quarter to continue to play. Yeah, well, when you get seniors, by this point, if they don't know how to play with fouls and you can just trust them to play, then I'd be real surprised he doesn't come back in and, and do a good job. Well, you, you make a point. You're going to have to trust your girls to play with fouls almost no matter what <laughs> because a uh, few of them like to foul. They are aggressive. And uh, – the bench is awful short these days. <laughs> you probably never had this short of a bench on I, your coaching I, career. I have not. 
my very first year I was a JV coach in Northeast Missouri and we had eight and I, I loved it. It was so much fun and I had to learn how to do different drills and just work with them and that was one of the one of the real highlights of my career, just getting to work with my head coach, Dick Robinson. He's just one of my absolute favorite people on the planet. And he just kind of let me do my thing and figure it out. And, and what a great group of dudes that was, too. Inside, they're trying to feed Czar, but Skimper's there to knock it away with that offhand. Quickly into the game, number 22, Ryan Huddle. Played an aggressive JV game, did Ryan. And he's going to come in at the guard position for Jet. Yeah, those are two letters we haven't used a lot of this year with our girls, JV. Yeah. We had to kind of let them know, listen, you guys are going to have to be varsity as quick as we can. And to their credit, they have become really nice players and people that I can trust in, in big parts of the games. So, you know, serious shout out to those young freshman girls we have this year. Now he got three of them. Two of them have made the starts. Jason oh, gonna, no. no, no, Jason, come on, buddy. You gotta, he, he's, he's tired. There's no way he's gonna get high enough for a dunk in a game if that's all the closer he can get. Uh, uh, up, not out, buddy, up, not out. Full time out by Coach Fisher. We'll be back at Open Spaces Sports. 49-7, 5.51 to go here in this third quarter. Northern Valley on cruise control. And these boys have done a good job of pinning a lot of these games. And they keep at it on the defensive end, which has got to frustrate some of the teams. But they got to understand that's how come they're this good is because they don't want to give up a single possession. Yeah, and that's the thing. When you get good, you don't have to explain why you're just you keep playing hard. Their their job is to figure out how to do something against you. You don't change what you do. Otherwise, you start developing bad habits. Yep, and you can't have it. If your intention is to have a great season and go all the way with it, there's no there's no there's no time for that. And if you don't like being whooped, then get better. That is one of the coaching philosophies that I love. Turnaround jump shot over Tallheim. Schmidt missed it. Quickly up to Kenton. He'll go up with the left hand and score. Let's lay it in for Kenton. As he continues to make his assault on the all-time leading score chart in the Northern Valley Boys High School records over the last Multiple games, he's passed up Nathan Cox, Austin Dahlheim, left dad in the dust, Joey Copper, passed head coach Kevin Sides last Tuesday night, and now sits alone at number four. Tra trailing now, the great athlete Travis Valeen. He sits at number three. Kenton's going to have to average about 23-ish mm, a game to catch him in the regular, or to catch him in before state. They got, including tonight, they've got six games left. Well, four in the regular season with tonight, and then you'd assume they get two a minimum in the sub-state, so that's a, probably six games there. If he averages 23, he can track down one of the all-time great athletes in Northern Valley history, Travis Valeen. That's really cool. We, we, the success we had in Lathrop, we started getting some thousand point scorers and all that. And it's, it's really neat to see guys do the math because we even talked about it tonight, setting specific goals. You know, we're, we wanted to score 60 points, 15 every corner. We hit 60 tonight. We wanted to hold them under 30. They got to 28. If you don't, if you don't put pencil to paper to figure out what your goals are, they're just, they're just thoughts. Once it's down, then, then you can actually go after them, and it's very tangible. So I want to ask you then, in that girls' game, something magical happened. Do you know what that was? I understand there's some some hair. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's a, oh, the hair deal? Yeah. yeah uh, I think, see, well, I, think I, wasn't even that. I wasn't even talking about that. Austin and Jordan both wore their hair up. Austin had never worn her hair up, but um, – <laughs> 
she, she finished with 23 tonight, so we'll see what next time she comes as Jeremiah drains his first three of the night. But the more important was the stat stuffer, Audrey Bina. Oh. There's a rumor she went for a triple-double here tonight. Really? I, I bet her, she was close to 10 blocks. Her Close to 10 blocks. We started counting about the second quarter. Her last three fouls all were ticky-tack oh. that she got the block on, so she doesn't count it. You're going to have to go back and see if she actually netted a triple-double. We, we've been chasing a few because Ross loves these things. Yeah. We're not sure a triple-double has ever happened on the girls' side. Really? How exciting. So that could have happened for Audrey Bina tonight. We'll confirm yep. the next time around here at Open Spaces. Yep. Not a plug for huddle, but they have a what's called huddle assist, and they track all of these, you know, all these uh, stats and all that stuff. And one night I had her for seven blocks, and Huddle had her for one. Oh, they're terrible at the terrible. blocks. Terrible. So we're just I, – I, I, and I've always been a guy I, – I like to watch the game. I like to stat it all out. So we'll, we'll get that confirmed. That is the one thing that Huddle does not do well at That's all. That's the only blocks. thing. Yep. But Everything else is beautiful. Yep. At the rim, Hammond blocks the shot. Bakota's going to go to the line for two. Must have got some arm. Yeah, I'm starting. I started – my first coaching season was 93-94. Um, and, you know, back in those days, you had to take a VCR tape and the camera to games. And in, in Illinois, where I started, you weren't allowed to video the game, so you'd have to write everything out. You weren't allowed to? You, nope. Back in those days, you were not allowed to take a video camera to a game. Wow. Yeah. So my dad was uh, – he bought one of the earlier – Video cameras, he said, because he had to keep his mouth shut when my sister was playing, and he videotaped everything from yeah. that on up. So from about 88 on up, whenever one of our kids, one of his kids were playing, he's got the videotape of it. If you were, for your school, you could do it, but if you were a, you know, just scouting a game, it was not allowed in Illinois. Makes it tough yeah. trying to develop a scouting report. You have to rely on your friends in the coaching industry. Or you just had to go to games all night. You would, you would spend, you know, a week trying to figure out, okay, how can we see this team? How can we see that team? And you had to just go to their gym and watch them. Oh. And then you took your notebook with you and you just took 10 pages of notes. Well, that developed a skill, though. Yes, it did. Because you had to know what to see and be able to tell whether it was a kid's off night or that was his norm. That's right, and that was hard to know too. But what, what you mostly did was, okay, does this kid have a left hand? What's he do when he catches it in the post? You know, can you, can you deny wings? Can you do those kinds of things? And, you know, that's how, that's how my brain became, you know, whatever it is now, you know. <laughs> it's, a, it's a skilled coach. You've been doing it for quite a few years. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's funny, too, because the summertime, I spend almost no time talking about defense. We just do everything is offense, skill development, all that stuff. And in the wintertime, it flips. So I had no time with these girls in the summer, so I had to try to teach them all these things in such a fast space. We didn't do our first post drills until this week. I was going to say, Jordan came to me tonight and said, Dad, he taught me four post moves. I said, well, which one was it? Well, I think one of them was called the step through. Yeah, that was a good one to learn. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll kick our sponsors and be back in Trust family in Phillipsburg, Logan, Long Island, Smith County Bank and Smith Center, and Solomon Valley Bank in Beloit. Member FDIC. You work. Back into basketball, Northern Valley. Man to man, 100% of the time here. I was going to say, Drew Skipper is camping in the restraining line. But there was a five-second call instead. It's always funny to me. We come to these gyms that have these restraining lines, and it always seems like the home team is the one that gets caught somehow or another in that silly thing. Did they? Are they prevalent anywhere else other than in Western Kansas, where some of these barns are quite dated? I've not. I've. I've never coached in a gym that's had one. Now, well, that's not true. When I was in northeast Missouri, some of these old barns like this are up there, too. So, But not normally. It's rare, yeah. So I think we have three or four restraining lines within the league. 
Yeah, and in all reality, I don't know why it matters. You know, there's there's a few feet of space all the way around this thing. So, you know, if anything, you could just put one on the side and just call it good that way. Schmidt gets free. Good hesitation, but should have hesitated just a little bit more as Gavin recovered. 22 seconds remaining. Step through for Jason, and he'll score it. He has just kept improving all season. It, it mirrors his football. He really developed into a heck of a football player this year. He's turned into a heck of a basketball player as this For season sure. goes along. Stuffed at the rim by both Brody and Drew, and that will get the third quarter complete. We'll be back with your fourth quarter action, and it'll be running clock. They bring it every night, too. Those are especially considering three of them worked their buns off in a basketball game before that, too, and they just come out with a smile, and they just do their thing. Pretty cool. It is. Now Northern Valley will start with a whole new starting five come into this fourth quarter. Looks like Connor David, Owen Hammond, Caden Lowry, Maverick Rogers, and Gabe Rudd to go alongside the Titans. Yeah, and I want to give a shout-out to – well, I think all of these guys at some point or another have helped us in practice. There's times where we just had to have a five on five and these guys were willing to step in and, and you know, help us out here and there. And I, it's, it's really appreciated. Well, I've asked Austin when she got home from practice a couple times going, how are you guys, you know, running efficient inbounds plays and, and you know, scripting against a zone defense? It, it, it's tough to play shadow games there without an extra five players. Yeah, and we found out there's some really great parts to it, and then there's some things that just, you know, if you're going to try to get good post work, they, it's just Im almost impossible for girls to score in the post and to try to just make good moves. So we kind of scaled that back um, just because of that part. With For the guards, it's great. But, boy, for the post, it's just hard. It is. They just jump. Yeah, they yeah. They just elevate off yeah. the floor quite and they're a bit. And they're just taller and they're just stronger, and there's just not much a girl can do like that. So I got a text from somebody who must have not wanted to watch the boys game and re-watch the girls game. They had Audrey for 12 blocks in that game. <laughs> that is a lot. That is a lot. Yeah, my middle son uh, set a record at, at his high school. He had 100 blocks in the season, which meant he got four every night. And he had a, he only got, he had a, a couple of times where he got nine. Uh, you know, and he was 6'9". So wow. Just, yeah. So to put in perspective, you Northern Valley fans out there, most blocks in a season, the athletic Caden Bach, 62. <laughs> and your son had 100? 100, yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. Caden could absolutely fly. Won the state title in the high jump and leads all-time dunks at Northern Valley with a lot. Yeah, that son of mine, I, I don't mind bragging on them a little bit. He was he was an All-American at the D3 level in the high jump also. How high was his height? 6'10". He, he jumped 6'10". Wow. He had some, had some real good chances at seven feet. That's forever. Yeah. We'll be back in 30 seconds with more with Coach Lewis. With fast delivery of a consistent product, Long Island Ready Mix can turn your concrete dreams into a reality with high quality cement. 100 blocks in a season is the Kimbe Mutombo stuff. Did he have the finger wag down? No, I didn't allow that. Not going to happen. No. Coach would have benched him for that. Yeah, Were you, did you have the pleasure of coaching your boys on the high school level? Yes. Yep. And that's the greatest, the greatest thrill and the greatest challenge that I've, I'll have, probably ever have. There was one when, when my middle son was a senior, the next one was a, soft, or a junior, and then the youngest was a freshman. Um, and they all got, and you know, they were just, they were, they were pretty good. So I, st I started starting them after Christmas, and I don't know that I could be, you know, I don't even know if I could tell the story, just how proud I was to see them all out there competing their hearts out, you know, with each other. You know, that's that's six nine six 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 four across a, a one three one front line. <laughs> In a class, what size? Class is, two. A class two yeah. size school. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, you had quite a few blowouts, I'm going to guess. We were pretty successful, yeah. And here is Northern Valley holding on to this 50-point lead at the moment. 
And a tied up ball between Court and Owen. I feel for Court, he's been limping around on that knee yeah. all night. Played some in the JV game and actually scored quite a few points in that JV game. But senior here on senior night wants to get in yeah. and do his best. To, they've had just as many long practices as the next guy because Niska with a three is no good. Rebounded by Schmidt. Now they'll go inside to Peterson. He'll try and take flight over Lowry, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. They said in the old halftime break where they were honoring the seniors, he's going to go to K-State's line and learn how to be a pilot. Very cool. Yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing quite like that reality that all this, all this work and all the days in the weight room and all, it's coming to an end. And you're just going to hang on to it for however, however long you can, because you know you get a chance to wear their their colors, or you know you, our guys get to wear that green and white. Man, it's it goes so darn fast, and and it's so special to be part of it, whether you're, you know, a state ranked team or just a team that's just scrappy all the time. You'll remember it just the same. Absolutely. And you'll have your own big fish stories, right? You bet. Owen. We like to see that move. Keep it up. Stop settling for three, big guy. He's just keeping getting better. He's a strong kid, too. 2.55 and a running clock. This one will go off of Owen Hammond and out of bounds. Stay here with Tri Plains. Really enjoyed this, Dean. I, I hope the people at home that kind of got to know you a little bit more, other than they just see this huge man over there on the <laughs> sideline who has led our Lady Huskies to it's, it's right now be an up and down season dramatically because we started with with those all those close losses and nobody lost faith whatsoever. Then you turn it into five big wins. And you still got more of this story yet to tell. That's the best part of it. I really you know, I've been talking about this, and, you know, I believe if you speak it into existence, sometimes it can just happen. Connor uh, David knocks in a three. So I, these, these girls haven't given up. They're they're taken to the – sometimes I call myself a mad scientist. I'm going to try this and yes, let's please. see what happens. Yes, please. Yeah. And uh, the substate is definitely not a closed opportunity for you guys. There's five teams in our sub-state that could win it this year. Sometimes that's just coach talk. That is that is legit this year. Inside to Bergston, but he missed the jumper over Lowry. And he'll clear the board, but yeah, that's it's gonna be crowded in Colby at the sub-state here in about a week and a half. Yep, yep, because you know, we were the five seed in that conference tournament, and I think we'll probably be the four or five seed in this sub-state tournament. Well, that's uh, you'd looked at it. Will that be where we land is four or five, you think? Yeah, I don't see. I don't really see any other way around that. A couple of teams already have 11 wins, and, you know, Thunder Ridge has got a ton of games, but they're very winnable games. Um, you know, and Shylin is just right there ahead of us. They're they're. I would guess they're probably the four or five or, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be in that boat with them. Well, nice follow by Gabe Rudd there. I know for all the Northern Valley fans, we'd like that one at home. So uh, yeah. see what we can do about that, right? That. We're sure, sure, sure we going to try. We don't want to travel out there to shy Lynn on the 4-5 matchup. Well, we're getting it done on the defensive end, so that travels anywhere you want to go. We're down to 25 seconds left to go in this one. As Gabe Rudd has got it. He'll go baseline, find Maverick Rogers, and he left it short. But that will end it for us. Dean, you probably got a few things that you need to cover. It's been great getting to know you and do this game with you today. I hope everybody at home enjoyed it as much as I did. This has been great. I've been so enjoyed being here and, and getting to know all these new people and just the community of Almina and, and Long Island. You, you can't beat this anywhere in the, anywhere in the United States.